assortment of scholars and students and, uh, and artists we have here tonight. It's just a wonderful occasion. It's nice to see you all here tonight on a Friday night. I want to thank the elders for the prayer and the drums for being here. Um, it's, it's lovely, as Dave said, to see so many people interested in um, indigenous issues and also in the arts. I can go one better than Dave. I'm, I am a humanities professor. I'm a, an English professor by trade and a disciplinary colleague of Joanne's. Uh, so it always uh, warms my heart when I see people using the humanities in a way to make the world a better place. Yesterday we were working on this play and dance for a good five hours. Okay. These grades range from grade 9 to grade 11. So, yeah, I hope you like it. Exhausted. What? Oh. I know the way. Follow me. Who are you, strange one? I'm the red alien faced alien guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was told by an elder that I was supposed to meet you. Yes, you were supposed to find me, young one. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're on a journey for respect, I see. I do not know that such word. See, that is the word you must learn. I got to find my dictionary then. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta stop being drugged. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can't have slaves. And you smell like borscht. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> okay then, great one. I will, uh, I'll think about it. No, you better. While I scratch my paper face. <laughs> <laughs> It's you again. Yes, that's why I said I'm back. Hi. Oh. So that's ego, right? Have you found respect yet? Well, I have not found respect yet, but I have freed my slave. You see right there. See, that's happening right now. Is it? It's happening. Oh. You free your slave, you let her go. If you love something, set it free. But, but if it comes back, does that mean I can keep her? <laughs> <laughs> no! Drinking and free my slave, yet you constantly smoke around your grandchild. But it is very not good for him to be around you when you are smoking cigarettes or tobacco. Mm -hmm. And you say not to care at all. But it was very hard for me to let my slave go. I know. I was hoping, you know, you could possibly do the same. What? <laughs> what? Yeah. Okay. Must let go. Well, okay, we have both achieved something today, but I've still not found respect. supported them in well-being but then they made puppets and the puppets took over and this is what they created so um, and they've agreed if you'd like to you can uh, question some of the puppets would you prefer to do that from behind the stage or would you yeah, yeah. okay yeah. Yeah. so if you'd like to go behind the stage yes how do they define well-being how do you define well-being? It's uh, one at a time, because puppets are a bit anarchic. So, uh, okay. <laughs> well-being is having family and playing sports. Our <laughs> sports are fun. Yes. I, I, any other of the puppets would like to expand on that? <laughs> <laughs> Who is it? Put up your hands. Okay, okay, here. Alien. Alien, all right, well, <laughs> I would say self-respect is, or wait, what were we trying to do? Well-being. It's a very important <laughs> self Well-being <laughs> is all about exercise and getting stuff done. I don't know, I forgot. Wait, 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 wait. Stay in school. Okay. Who says wait, wait? wait. <laughs> That one right this there. One. <laughs> <laughs> um, you over there. Yeah. 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 Do you want to say something? No, 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 I'm shy. Somebody <laughs> 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 uh, over here, the end here, you put up your hand. Hello, hello. What have you got to tell us about well-being? <laughs> well-being is good.
good for you. No. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, and what helps you to achieve it? Uh, family. Family. Great. Uh, going uh, to school. And going to school. Yes. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Anyway, Igor, have you got anything to add to this? Have I got, uh, have I got anything to add to this? Yes. <laughs> no. um, I, well, yeah, like, I have a drunk, but my puppeteer, ah, uh, the guy right here, yeah. moving him. Well, I think in well-being, you know, something you should, you know, have. I mean, you know, something good. It's, it's a good thing, quit hitting me. <laughs> but, um, like, would I... Uh, okay, then. Well, in my own opinion, like, with the whole well-being, and something you do to be, um, well-being, <laughs> for me, is a culture thing with, um, Bow Wow drumming and singing back in the school where we're all from. Yeah. Any new questions? Something that's easy. Oh, it is. Okay, I'll grab it. I'll go here. So, another. That's so cool. Okay, I want to know why Eagle, why, why Eagle was telling um, the other guy not to smoke. Igor, why were you telling the elder not to smoke? Right here, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, um, well, it's not fair considering, you know, he's a, uh, he likes to smoke. He's a smokeaholic, yeah. <laughs> well, he's like that, and, you know, I had to give up. I had to learn respect, and I had to, yeah, he was an elder. And also, you know, I had to give up my slave. No. Now, did giving up your slave make you feel healthier or less healthy? Well, less healthy. Ah. <laughs> 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 I don't know if anybody just wants to I'm pretty sure that's illegal now. It's 2013. I have a question for the the one with the blue feather. <laughs> so I noticed that you you really like being up front and center there, and I want to know what you like about performing like that. Oh. I like performing because I like my face. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Oprah, mine is a, a question for Wasagi Chuck. Wasagi Chuck, now I wasn't sure. This is another smoking question. It's a really, I, so I just, I just wanted some help here. Now I could interpret that you, you didn't stop smoking because sometimes we just can't stop doing bad things, but we still need our friends, or that you were being kind of belligerent. So I just wondered, was there a reason? Is there something I should know about? You um, and smoking? I'm a very big hypocrite. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> this is what you get with public. <laughs> So, uh, and they sort of embodiments of dancing and family and friends and uh, tradition and culture. Is that right? Have I missed anything? <coughs> no. Okay. And, uh, and uh, do any of you want to say anything? 
I had an eye ten minutes ago. <laughs> 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 and did a lot of workshops with Warren. And what we've tried to do is embody the same, Warren and I have tried to embody the same sort of methodology in this that we used with the kids, so that we're not, we're sort of walking the talk, as it were. So that's how we designed this, and it will unfold in that way a little bit. And uh, just to say a little bit more about the logs before we get back in a circle, which is the kit here. Uh, these are your logs, so they're your personal logs of this journey. And, uh, and also any thoughts you have as you go along the way. Uh, I'd like to ask, <coughs> as a beginning, for people to share the place or space you're co you come from and where you are right now, right in this room. I'm Andrew Burton. I am the founder and artistic director of the Street Spirits Theatre Company in Prince George, British Columbia. The work that I do, the Street Spirits Theatre Company, we work in social action theatre. We do uh, theatre's research. We do workshops. We make movies. Last night we had rehearsal, and I asked my young young actors if there was. Um, anything that they wanted me to say to this, to this group. And uh, because that's kind of how we work. <laughs> and uh, they had a very, a very uh, detailed conversation. But essentially what they said was, <coughs> you help people by asking them, not by telling them. And that uh, if you give people the opportunity to do the right thing, they will. And that uh, change comes when people get together. That's those are three. Those are the three major statements that we want to make sure I got across. Um, I'm Rachel Landy. I'm from Southern Ontario, but I'm actually studying at Memorial University in Newfoundland, and I'm a PhD student there. And my research partners are in Labrador and Coast Bay, and I'm working with the, the Friendship Center um, HME prevention program there. Right. Uh, my name is Mamata Pandi and I'm <coughs> the postdoctoral student. I will be working with the uh, Indigenous People Health Research Center. Uh, I think my first uh, uh, introduction to this area of research was when I was working as a research assistant again at IPHRC. I'm actually a practicing educator in one of the school divisions in Regina here. So I have the pleasure and opportunity of working with young kids all the time, every day. And although it's exhausting at the end of the day and at the end of a Friday, the last thing I want to do is come spend my Friday night with children. <laughs> Diane Conrad from New Alberta in education. And um, I'm coming from a place of doing way too much. <laughs> Feeling like it's chasing me all the time. And I just wanted some time to let that go. Thank you. I'm Lucy Liu. Um, 
I'm a mom right now. That's where I am. <laughs> and, and, and my son's right there with my husband, Paul. So uh, in my former life, six months ago, I was a full-time art therapist and a clinician, child, um, child therapist. I work at Minwashin Lodge in Ottawa, the Aboriginal Women's Support Center. So I work with families. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. I am Gaylene Benjo, and being a teacher, I <coughs> was just happy to see the puppets that the students were able to make, and with the mask <coughs> being behind, they, they, they were able to come out of their shells a lot more than when they were in front of everybody, like when everybody was able to see them. So I like how it brought out the, the deeper what they wanted to say, really wanted to say, it, it, they had the mask in front of them that they were able to actually say it without having people look at them or glare at them or anything like that. And it was funny and it said so much even with just the actions that they did. And I really enjoyed them. Thank you. Tons of that's my Nahawak name. Um, my name is David Banjo, officially, I guess. I mean, we would say officially, the colonial name that they gave. <laughs> my grandfather's name, my Nimasom, he was called Okishkamakanagastit uh, Mistit Finesi, meaning leader of the left handed Thunderbirds. Of course, they couldn't say that, so they said, okay, we'll call you Benjamin. <laughs> <laughs> and then they couldn't write that the following year, and got his five bucks, and so they said, okay, we'll call you Benjo. And so there we go, David Benjo. Working in uh, working with youth, um, it, it, uh, it sparked an interest in me, and I didn't have the, the greatest upbringing. <coughs> I know that. And um, sitting here with my wife sitting next to me now, and she's heard all the stories, like uh, everything that you hear in terms of what's happening on First Nations reserves. And there's a lot of negativity, but there's some positives. To see something like this, e this evening, to see this group of academics sitting here, wishing, to, uh, wanting to help. That's what we want to see. Right? Um, right now I'm uh, employed at First Nations University and been offered a full-time term there. Uh, I'm going to do a collaborative stuff with IPHRC and uh, I teach other young teachers. So I've taught for five years in Regina High School, um, teaching over there, teaching the young teachers to get out there and promote arts, right? Because this is why I know I'm here. I'm here because of the visual arts concept. I wouldn't exist probably if it wasn't for this. Uh, my name is Kit Mallow and I live in Montreal where there are more computers that don't work. Um, I've never worked with uh, outside of uh, Montreal so I'm really excited to be here. I, my job is as a facilitator with nonprofit organizations and so I work with internal organizational health and dynamics of groups. Um, but I was an artist before I realized that I, you can't make money. <laughs> <laughs> so I decided to uh, work with groups using creative methods instead. I've held this stone on many occasions. Um, I'm Linda Goulet. I'm at First Nations University. What I'm feeling right now is just, it's, uh, the arts always amaze me when you put kids and open a space for them to be creative. It's always just amazing, like those puppets and the way the kids were acting with them. It was just, um, you know, like you could just see these little characters coming to life. And so I'm really feeling energized by that, combined with um, all of you here bringing your different energy from all over. It's one thing, you know, to talk about a symposium and bringing the bodies together and seeing everybody here. I'm Karen Schmidt. I'm the community partner uh, for Fort Capel, just <coughs> about an hour away from here. And in between here and Papika is where the students were from. We were at the workshop yesterday. Tony and Warren led the workshop with the youth. And the very first thing they said in the morning was, well, we found out we were doing something different and we were so excited. We're just so excited what's going to happen today. And you took them to wonderful places. So my love for children, my love for our people is uh, very strong. And I'm glad 
to be a part of this group here because my late father all said their children, our grandchildren are the greatest gift that are from Creator. And uh, we must learn to love them and raise them up to be just, uh, respectful, contributing uh, people uh, in the community. Recently, I think it's easier to talk recently because there's some. I've worked with young people and children since I was uh, about 16, so that's over 40 years. And um, I don't know how that happened. But uh, yeah, I just thought, same as Joe really, even from then, I just thought it's the most important thing to do. So I've been doing that since then. I've been a full time artist for 30 years. I'm Bozeman, Montana, so it's south and west of here. And I work at Montana State University and have been working with the tribal nations there for 17 years. And it's been a really transforming and great experience on all different kinds of health projects. Well, I'm very humbled to be here. It's really a blessing and a gift. And um, on many levels, so um, my name is Melanie Cueva, and I'm living and have worked with and for Alaska Native people, and um, I'm currently living in Anchorage, Alaska, and I've been there probably about 30 years. There's 229 federally recognized tribes in Alaska, so my life I've been um, blessed to work with and for American Indian and Alaska Native people. And I work predominantly with our village-based healers and healthcare providers around the arts and exploring <coughs> what wellness looks like through drawing, moving, sculpting, um, and predominantly around cancer. Cancer is the leading cause of death for Alaska's diverse Native peoples. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm Joanna Piscanu. Signature on the letter that went to everybody. So <laughs> nice to nice to meet you in the uh, face to face. I knew some of you before, but a lot of you are all. We were just having this whole mad brainstorming session of people who do this sort of work in various disciplines. So it's pretty cool to actually get together with you. My family is uh, I'm Métis. Well, I have two Métis grandparents and two Scottish grandparents. Each Métis grandparent married somebody from Scotland. So I both go to Powell, dance the river jig, jig and celebrate Robbie Burns Day. <laughs> and that feels good too. It's really amazing to see how that little, the card with the cereal boxes I was collecting for two weeks can turn into something that give voice, you know, that allow kids to have a voice. So I think this, the work we're doing together. We wrote an article about the colonization of the imagination. I think that was an essential part of taking the land, you know, and keeping the people down. Because if you have a good imagination, you might imagine you didn't like it and how to do something differently. So now we have to, to heal is to support our communities and bringing that back, I think. So that's all I have to say. Um, my name is Rose Jolly. I come to my arts-based experiences through working um, with communities primarily in South Africa. Not completely, but primarily. I work in rural areas, not, not anywhere in the urban areas. Um, I work on gender-based violence. Um, I love text, but for me everything's about, about story. And about nine years ago I, I had the privilege of starting to work in a community-based program that offers free humanities university courses to marginalized people, people um, with experience with poverty, homelessness, addictions. Um, and I've continued to, to do that work and, and now brought the program to my university. And so I'm really honored to be here. And I, I um, my journey has been um, um, one of r risking and starting to bring storytelling and more art into the classroom space, first of all in the humanities program. And when I saw what a difference it made and how much it transformed the teaching space, that transformed the way I teach in the university. Fantastic, and many of you have mentioned, I think, uh, you know, watching the youth stand in front of the curtain and then 
happened behind the curtain and that transformation that happened was, was really, really quite magical. Um, and I've been fortunate to, to see that in my own work um, over the last while, I guess over the last the ten, 10 years or so, I've been working um, in Aboriginal communities, particularly on issues related to HIV for about 10 or so years. And uh, I've had the privilege and the honor of working with Aboriginal youth doing some fantastic uh, uh, arts work with a couple of my colleagues over here. Uh, and in my, in my own work, I'm a PhD candidate at the moment uh, at the University of Ottawa in population health. And I've had the, the privilege of working with HIV positive Aboriginal women, um, doing, uh, doing art space, but also uh, incorporating, <coughs> incorporating culture and traditional arts in, into our work. And uh, if I wasn't convinced of the power of, um, of the arts and, and, and of culture in research before I went into, into this work, I certainly am happy. <coughs> it's, it's, been, it's been amazing and transformative on so many levels for, for so many of us. Uh, my name is Sam McKegney. Uh, I'm a settler scholar of Indigenous literatures at uh, Queen's University. I grew up uh, along the shores of Lake Huron in Anishinaabe territory in a little town called Kincardine. I do believe that the stories we tell, the ways we narrate our lives, um, those things matter a great deal. But, I mean, words words can be damaging too. And this stone in my hand reminds me of that. There's a lot of power in this stone. And, uh, and uh, I, I think um, if we can help arm people with the skills to protect themselves with words and to, uh, to build communities with words, um, that can be positive. So. I look forward to being part of this experience over the weekend. And thank you very much for having me. Um, Anishinaabe from Kendall and Stony Point Reserve in southwestern Ontario. Um, I'm currently uh, finishing up my PhD, almost there. <laughs> and I just recently started uh, started a position at McMaster. Um, so I'm cross-appointed in the School of Social Work and in Health, Aging, and Society. So I've been involved with Sarah and June and Tracy um, exploring arts-based approaches and HIV prevention for Aboriginal youth, and that's been an eye-opening experience. And, and watching from the side Tracy's project on, uh, on that she's using with, with Aboriginal women, um, and uh, and working on, a, on my, one of my own projects around with, with a colleague of mine at McMaster on using digital stories to explore cultural understandings of home and what that means in the context of, of living with HRV. It's Julia Gray. And uh, I, first I just want to um, acknowledge how present everybody is. It's, it's a really big circle and, uh, and uh, those of us at the end <laughs> certainly appreciate everybody's so attentive. It's nice. I'm a playwright and a theatre director. And I work with communities and I work with researchers and academics, and I develop plays <coughs> based on what's happening in the room. And I'm also a doctoral student, and my, um, my PhD is really looking at sort of theorizing what that process is about. <coughs> and I'm, I was feeling a little shy coming here, and it's a very, um, energized group, so I feel great. It's perhaps easier for me to, to say uh, who I am and where I'm from. I'll try to explain that, but uh, I'm a designer, an artist. I've come to describe myself as an artivist, so an activist <laughs> and an artist. Um, I work predominantly with youth. I've been working in Africa, especially Uganda, for the last seven years, um, drawing on different youth issues. Um, HIV, <coughs> prostitution, drug abuse, uh, issues that the youth identify. Um, the reason I say it's a bit hard to say where I'm from is because I've increasingly, over the few, last few years as a doctoral student, I've been working on decolonizing myself and someone once described my culture as a settler Canadian as being a, a very de-indigenized culture and I think that's been very much my own story in that I grew up in rural Alberta in Cary Creek and I went off to Montreal and I went off to many different countries in Africa and I've been very nomadic um, and I've had really wonderful experiences and I have to say that my interests of doing art and design and art <coughs> and communities 
it didn't emerge out of my, my own culture, but it was something I've learned from um, African cultures, Aboriginal cultures, um, cultures other than my own. The, is, the words I've said now are more than, you know, someone might say in a whole conference, so I really... Uh, <laughs> I love the fact that we're getting to know each other, and I think that's a really great starting point. And, um, yeah, but the theater piece <coughs> w was beautiful, and I think on what Tony said, you know, so many times people talk about, you know, youth-led approaches and, and putting, you know, youth first or whichever, you know, identity group it is, and um, oftentimes you, we don't see that in practice, so... Um, I feel just like the walk in the talk thing, um, it just feels like there's been a, a long time dedication to making this space a, a decolonizing space or a, a, you know, a, just a welcoming space. So I feel very honored to be here and uh, I thank everyone for um, whatever forces it were that allowed me to come here. So, thank you. Hi everybody, my name is June Larkin. I was, I'm from Southwestern Ontario, Chatham, Ontario, anybody know it? <laughs> yeah, anybody been there? Yeah, yeah great. Um, I'm now teaching at the University of Toronto. I teach women and gender studies and I teach equity studies. And I coordinate a project at UC <coughs> called the Gendering Adolescent AIDS Prevention Project, the GAP Project. And it's a program that includes a number of education and research projects with youth using arts based approaches to HIV prevention and sexual health education. So, and it's interesting because in the work we use performed ethnography, photo voice, digital storytelling, some art. I don't do anything artistic myself, nothing. So I don't know what that means that I've sort of dedicated my research and my community work to doing something in the arts. So I think that's kind of interesting. There was a project where Aboriginal youth and focus groups talked about the connections between colonialism and HIV vulnerability. And then a group of youth took that data and using that data wrote scripts as a way of them presenting that data in performance. And it was just such an interesting way to do the education, the knowledge dissemination. And then we also wrote a <coughs> curriculum and uh, it's been used to, to do the work in a creative way and I think it has a much more powerful impact. I'm uh, Sarah Flicker and um, I live and teach in Toronto at York University. I grew up in Montreal. I've been doing HIV prevention work for a long time. I was actually originally trained, I shouldn't even admit it in this crowd as an epidemiologist, mm -hmm. like a number cruncher kind of person. And uh, I know. We're an accepting crowd. Thank you. I <laughs> think I just come out with communities all over the country on um, getting youth involved and engaged in talking about issues through the arts. And CIHR funds it, so I'm thrilled. <laughs> My name is Deanna Vader. Thank you very much for inviting me. Um, I actually, this is fair, I was an army brat, so raised all across Canada, but my mom is um, a Pinto Kustan, BT from me, from Lorange. I can talk about all kinds of glorious and happy and um, wonderful things in my kids' lives. Um, her, her, her kids who live in Victoria and Edmonton, Courtney, all around, um, have been <coughs> dealing with, you know, addiction in jail and um, stuff like that. And I just, you know, had some bad news about um, one of the cousins. And I just think about how, you know, what we are trying to change, but we're also trying to um, see that health in our own families. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just a, you know, it's a thing I think we all share to a certain extent. And so I just want, <laughs> I'm open for <laughs> advice, <laughs> strategies, any kind of um, <coughs> I, 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 or revelations, actually, if I, um, I'm ready for that. So. Um, yeah. I've been involved in the arts since I was, since I was a kid, and my, my background, I, my undergrad is in music, and my master's work is in ethnomusicology. And I was looking at um, how, in particular, well, different types of arts are used in communication and engagement with youth in HIV education and prevention, but particularly looking at the use of hip hop music that was created by youth or for youth or with youth um, with the end used uh, the project that was discussed a bit earlier um, taking action uh, as a case study to uh, look at <coughs> the use of hip hop in that context. So there's my little bit about the arts now. <laughs> well, well, what we do at every step of the way in this weekend uh, is indicative of what the next step is. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a growing layering of, of experience and we heard a lot about each other and I'm all about embodying that and 
coming from a theatrical and theater facilitation background. So I like I, I'm doing that adaptation. Okay. Now share with the people you you're, you're connecting to what you think uh, an interest or anything that comes to mind when you think of connection. <laughs> Connect with again. The second stage is someone you don't know. You don't know anything about what they're talking about, or that you're intrigued by it, but you don't. You know very little what what they were talking about. They might have shared or whatever they were sharing. It's the unknown. It's the unknown. Two people. That you're intrigued by, it's the unknown, and you might want to find out more about. I know you're perfect. That's right. Here's one. Talk about what intrigues you. Oh, what intrigues you? Facilitators, whatever that means. It's not actually a word that I use a lot, but we are your facilitators. And because uh, I think it's, uh, I actually prefer, prefer the word, I, my research was in workshop as a distinctive form of practice. And the best metaphor that I, I think facilitators is a bit of a weak metaphor, really. I prefer, my favourite one was story guide, actually. So that's. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. I like that. So we're going to story guide you uh, a little bit through uh, tomorrow and then more and more you're going to story guide wh wherever you want to go. But we don't want, we, so if you'll allow us to, we'll lead a couple of things tomorrow and then hand over to you by the afternoon. And you'll have a chance to share what you want to share. So we'll put a board up for people to make offers and Sunday will be open for kind of <coughs> little workshops or little things you need to say to each other or, or even questions if you've got questions that you want to share and answer. And uh, the other thing is, if you can, these are, these, are our, these are our guides to having something written or expressed. We expressed is probably a better word. Expressed towards the end. Our takeaway, if you like. This is our takeaway. So take it away, <laughs> write in it or do what you want in it and bring it back and just keep referring to it. So thank you very much. It's been lovely meeting you all. And we'll see you tomorrow.